You knew this was coming, didn't you? Nordic Warrior here, how's it going guys? So, let's talk about the events of boxing that took place last night. Of course, WBA light heavyweight champion Dimitri Bivol successfully defending his title against Canelo Alvarez by a unanimous decision, winning the fight in a big upset. So let's talk about it. Now, yes, I stayed up for the fight for anybody who's wondering. I decided to watch the fight live, which is unusual for me nowadays to stay up, to stay up late to watch a a fight over in the States, usually I can never be bothered, usually I'm too busy. And But for some reason, I really was curious about this fight, and it's a fight that I, for, for whatever reason, despite what I suspect about Canelo and his career, there was something different about this fight, and for whatever reason, curiosity really... My curiosity really peaked the day before the fight, and I decided I really wanted to watch it live for some reason, so I'm glad I did. Now... At this point in time, I've only seen the fight once. I watched it live and I haven't watched it since. And I wanted to make my immediate points known on here. I wanted to make a, a an immediate post-fight reaction, but it was too late. I was tired. I had a very busy day planned for Sunday, so I, I really needed to get some sleep. So I figured I'd just let the dust settle a little bit and maybe re-watch the fight and do a video Sunday night. But I, I haven't watched the fight yet. I haven't found a, a copy of it yet, but... I think I saw pretty much all I needed to see watching the fight live. I mean, it was a very standard fight. It was very, very easy to call, very easy to score. And it really, in my personal opinion, it really confirmed a lot of the beliefs and suspicions I had about Canelo all along. So let's talk about it. Now, the term exposure in boxing is often an overused term. I've talked about this before, and I've talked about it quite recently too, how a lot of boxing fans, in my personal opinion, are very reactionary. A lot of boxing fans are glory supporters, and what I mean by that is, let's say a fighter puts on a really good performance, or wins a, a, a relatively big fight, and everybody jumps on the bandwagon, you know, while, every, while it's going great, they are on board with that fighter. Then, of course, when a fighter loses or looks terrible... Um, they tend to throw that fighter in the trash, basically, and they tend to write them off. And, you know, it's it's all or nothing with a lot of boxing fans, is the point I'm trying to make. And they're very inconsistent with their views on certain fighters. Then you get people like myself, and people like my general viewing audience, and the people I generally interact with on here, who keep it consistent, right? We tend to keep it consistent with fighters. When we have a particular opinion or a particular view on a fighter it takes more than one fight to change that opinion okay like if i if i know that a fighter is good and if i know a fighter is world class one bad performance or one loss doesn't generally put me off that fighter likewise if i know a fighter isn't very good and i think a fighter is overrated them having one career best performance isn't going to really endear me to that fighter and change everything that i knew about them beforehand so I'm not quite as reactionary as a lot of boxing fans out there, I think. And like I said, I don't, I don't use terms like exposed lightly. But I've got to be perfectly honest with you guys. I don't think there's ever been a more legitimate and more clear example of an exposure as what we saw last night with Canelo Alvarez and Dimitri Bivol. So let's talk about it. Now, you guys that have been following me for any length of time will know what my views on Canelo Alvarez are. I believe, and have believed all along, that Canelo Alvarez is a fraud. I believe that several, if not all, of his fights in recent years have been staged. Um, not only do I... Not, not only do we all know, right? And, and again, let, let's, let's forget conspiracies here and just look at what we know. We know that Canelo Alvarez, throughout his entire career, has had A-side privileges, okay? We know it's very, very difficult to get a fair decision against him in America, okay, because even if you don't believe that his fights are staged, even if you don't believe that they're able to compromise his opponents, what you do know, right, if, if you've followed, if you've paid attention to what's been going on behind the scenes with Canelo and if you've been watching boxing longer than five minutes, you know that at very least, the guy has a lot of privileges, okay? There's a lot of weight stipulations. Um, the scorecards for some of his fights are absolutely atrocious. And by the way, the scorecards for this fight, I'll get into it a little bit later when I talk about 
how I saw the fight going. But again, it's a consistent theme with Canelo. You know you can't get a fair decision against him. And you know that he's going to have certain clauses in the contract that are going to at least, at, at very least, compromise you and give him a better chance of winning, if you know what I mean. So it's never really been a level playing field with Canelo. And I think that anybody who denies that is simply in denial. You know, we, we all know that what's going on with Canelo and his... The, the way that the boxing media have labelled him an all-time great and, you know, they're talking about him as as being like a, a top pound-for-pound pound level fighter, he's never proven it because he's never had to fight on the road. He's never fought on really a, a level playing field like a lot of these other guys have. So that's one of the one of the things we all know about Canelo. But with me and a few of my of my viewers and the people that I interact with, we take it a little bit further because not only do we believe that Canelo has a lot of corruption on his side, but we believe that a lot of his fights have been staged, right? We believe that there's been dives, that there's been people bought off and people compromised, you know, due to legal cases and stuff like that. And, you know, his whole career just, just reeks, doesn't it? It reeks of suspicion, you know, in, in regards to the validity of a lot of his fights. And going into this fight, and you, you guys might recall, I made a video a while back where I was, I was talking, I was just speculating a little bit about this fight, about how, and, and obviously I, I didn't think Beevil was going to get the win, I, I thought this was going to be more than likely either a robbery or a dive, that's what I thought uh, all through the build-up. But there was something different about this fight, wasn't there? There, there was a, something in the air with this fight, you know, something in, in, in the whole atmosphere surrounding it, where it didn't have that same air of inevitability that Canelo's other fights had. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but there was something different about it. So let me stop rambling and let me talk about the fight. So the first round was very, very interesting to me. What I saw in the first round is something I haven't seen from a Canelo Alvarez fight since the second Gennady Golovkin fight. And what I'm talking about is a guy actually trying to hit him. Okay, so in the first round... Dimitri Bivol, all he does in the first round is jab. I don't think Bivol really did anything other than throw a jab to the head. And, and, and he wasn't really, it wasn't like he was throwing like an authoritative, a, a, an authoritative jab. You know, it wasn't like a, a triple G jab. It wasn't like a, a Kubrat Pulev jab or a Vladimir Klitschko jab. You know, a jab that snaps your head back and puts you in, puts you in your shield, basically. It wasn't, it wasn't that type of shot. It was just a jab. It was just boxing 101. It was just a, a feeling out session. But the thing is, it was landing and he was actually targeting it straight, straight through Canelo's guard. You guys might recall, I've talked in the past about how how important boxing fundamentals are. And it's important to have a high guard, you know, when you're, when you're on the outside against an opponent. But Canelo's guard is very, very flimsy. It's very, very weak. You know, when he blocks punches, he's very limp-wristed. So when I see these guys throwing jabs at Canelo, like when he fought Kovalev, they'll throw a jab and sometimes they'll, they'll hit him in the gloves and they'll hit him in the arms. But there's no penetration, despite the fact Canelo's so limp-wristed and doesn't appear to be very durable. You know, he's not like a guy like Arthur Abraham, for example, who's so physically strong that when you hit him in the arms, it's like hitting a brick wall. It's not like that with Canelo. Canelo's, like I said, he's very limp-wristed, he's very loose. Um, seems to be very relaxed in the ring and it just seems effortless the way he was avoiding jabs but in this fight Bevel was throwing the jab in round one and Canelo looked different didn't he <laughs> let's just say there was something different about this one um, when Canelo went back to the corner after round one and by the way I hear that all three judges gave that round to Canelo <laughs> that's hilarious but but I digress Canelo went back to the corner, and I saw something that I don't think I've ever seen before with Canelo. He looked... I mean, I've seen it in spots, but I've never seen it to this degree. He looked at his coach, he looked out the ring, and he started gasping for air. Like, I'm, I'm talking... This is after one round where all Dimitri Bevel did was jab. And Canelo went back to the corner, and he looked frightened to death. Like, like there was something about Canelo. He, he knew after that first round... So, so much, so much different here about my, about this fight compared to my usual fights. So he sat down after the first round, looking absolutely gassed, looking as if he was shitting himself, and 
yeah, I, I thought to myself at that point, I'm like, okay, this is either going to go two ways. Like, I'm not even kidding here, right? After the first round, I thought this is either going to go two ways. Either Beevil is going to all of a sudden fall apart and he's going to take a dive at some point in the fight. Or this is going to be an embarrassing humiliation ritual for Canelo. That was literally what came to my mind. You know, I thought about Canelo's ring walk, how they introduced him with like the Mexican band, how he was dressed in all pink, looking like a weirdo, and and just the the, the way that they, they wouldn't even allow Beevil to have his national anthem or his flag. You know, they announced him as being from California when the dude's Russian. And it, it seemed to me like it, it was the Canelo show. It was Canelo this, Canelo that. They announced him as the pound for pound king and the number one guy in the sport. And it was as if the vibe I was getting after seeing those introductions and watching the first round was this is going to be an embarrassment. Like if, if Canelo doesn't win this fight and if it goes the way I think it's going, that's going to be it's going to be hard to watch. And the second round goes ahead. And I felt as if watching the second round, and again, I've only watched the fight once, it seemed to me as if Beevil was, again, because he was just jabbing mostly, he wasn't really active with his right hand, but he was throwing the jab, once again, throwing it straight, catching Canelo on the chin easily, occasionally he'd throw it to the body, and he appeared to me as if he had Canelo completely timed. And I was thinking to myself, all Dimitri Beevil has to do is drop that right hand, he could literally get Canelo out of here in a few rounds. Like I was literally thinking that while I was watching it because Canelo had zero, and I mean zero, head movement. Now, what have we heard from Canelo's fans over the years about why the likes of Kovalev and Smith and Yildirim and Plant and all those guys weren't able to catch him consistently, right? And why these guys don't tend to put much, much mustard on their punches and they tend to pull their punches, right? The thing that we've always heard, the excuse has always been, it's Canelo's head movement, right? It's Canelo's timing, it's Canelo's anticipation, and it's his boxing IQ. Where was that timing tonight? Where, where, where was that timing last night, sorry? Where was, the, where was the head movement last night? Where was the anticipation? You know, where was the four-dimensional chess that Canelo often plays in the ring? How was Dimitri Bevel, who from what I could see, wasn't doing anything special, right? It was just typical boxing 101. He was throwing a jab from a high guard. And and Canelo didn't have a clue. He didn't have a clue what to do. He looked completely and utterly flustered. You know, his face was reddening up in, in the early rounds. And when Canelo did throw punches, his technique was utterly, utterly atrocious. And... You guys will recall, if you've been watching me a long time, I've been telling you guys from for years now, Canelo Alvarez, he can't punch. The guy's got zero punching power. And there was a moment, I think somewhere in the early rounds of this fight, where he landed an uppercut with, like, full force. And Dimitri Bevel, I don't think he even blinked. If he did, I missed it. Like, he was completely and utterly unfazed by anything that Canelo would do. There was even times in the fight where... Beevil would go up on the ropes, and I was thinking to myself, here we go, here we go, <laughs> it's, here it comes, here comes the, you know, the dive, here comes the big swinging right hand, and Canelo would throw a shot maybe to the arm like a big haymaker, maybe he would get through with something, but Demevil would would immediately counter, like when Canelo would open himself up and, and throw one of those wide looping Deontay Wilder style shots, Beevil would throw a left hook, and then he would turn Canelo, which is, again, this is, this is basic fundamentals of boxing. When you're on the ropes and an opponent throws at you, you want to turn your opponent and sort of get your opponent backing up, you know, so you can sort of pull the old switcheroo on them. It's something that a lot of fighters do, like Lomachenko and, and Usyk. A lot of these Russian, Eastern European fighters do that. And it's something that Beevil was doing very well. And it, it became more and more clear as this fight went on that, Beevil's come to win and at the same time it was weird though because like I said I was I was thinking in the second round based on what I was seeing based on how effortlessly Beevil was able to land the jab on Canelo I was thinking to myself why doesn't Beevil just drop the right hand just throw it straight throw it hard maybe maybe double up on it and put a left hook behind it because Canelo Canelo wasn't moving his head 
Canelo was walking forward, he wasn't taking his head off centre line, he was loading up on his punches, and I, I mentioned in the Callum Smith fight, or in my in my um, video I made after that fight, you might recall how Canelo was doing the same thing there, like he was loading up on big swinging shots, and hitting Callum Smith in the arm, hitting him on the gloves, and Callum Smith was sort of just capitulating and backing up to the ropes, and I was thinking to myself, look, Callum Smith's a bigger man, with a longer reach, why doesn't he just throw punches with Canelo, and of course being the bigger man and the bigger puncher, he should come off better in those exchanges, but for whatever reason he wasn't doing it, and Dimitri Bivol was doing it, he was actually throwing punches with Canelo, but he wasn't really putting a lot on his punches, we know that Bivol, yeah he's not the biggest puncher at the light heavyweight division, he doesn't hit as hard as Baturbiev, he doesn't hit as hard as Kovalev for example, but He's definitely a, a very consistent, um, all-round professional, and he's got decent power. He can hurt you when he hits you, and he has had some pretty impressive knockouts in his career. So, I was thinking to myself, with how clumsy Canelo is looking in there, and I mean, he always looks like that, but it's just usually somehow he wins. But, but I was thinking to myself, all Beevil has to do is let that right hand go. Throw 1-2-1-2, one, two, one, two, or 2-1-2-1, two, one, two, one, and just... just keep the punches straight, keep the punches tight and short, and he should be able to stop Canelo. And what I noticed too, and this is something that actually did surprise me, is that in the corner between rounds, particularly after I think it was the third round, look at how absolutely exhausted Canelo was. And I was thinking to myself, did Canelo even train for this fight? Like, I would have thought, look, I've, I've always criticised Canelo, I've always seen him as a, as, a, as a fraud in boxing, but at very least I would have thought the guy would have been fit, like, at least I would have thought that he'd have been prepared for a hard 12 rounds, but from what I was seeing in there, Canelo was completely flustered, he was completely gassed, he was hyperventilating in the corner, and he was pushing his punches, and I think that's a, a big part of the reason why he wasn't able to hurt Beevil, because... Like I said, there was no power on his punches. He was just pushing them and forcing them out there. And every time he would hit Beevil, Beevil just was completely unfazed by it. And Beevil looked like the bigger man. He looked like the stronger man. He looked like the more durable man. He looked faster. He definitely had the better boxing skills, the better boxing fundamentals. And it really confirmed... It, it confirmed to me a lot of the suspicions that I had about Canelo going into the fight. And... The, 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 the suspicions I've always had about Canelo, and that is that these guys who have been fighting him ever since, I'd say, the second Triple G fight, they've been taking it easy on him. You know, they, they've been not putting full power behind their punches. They've been basically allowing him to dictate, allowing him to back them up without providing any resistance. You know, they've been allowing him to load up on big punches, and they've just been capitulating and putting themselves in the positions to be hit by those punches. But Dimitri Bivol wasn't doing it. Now, one of the things that a lot of people seem to agree with me on, because I've seen quite a few comments, and I was thinking this during the fight, Dimitri Bivol could have stopped Canelo, in my opinion, because there was there was moments in the fight where he would get Canelo on the ropes, he would sort of turn Canelo, and there was even moments where Canelo would drop his hands on the ropes, and he was looking as if, as if he was looking for a sign, or he was looking for a signal, or some sort of help. Like, he was looking at the referee, Russell Mora. I, th I think it was Russell Mora. He was looking at the referee. Um, he was looking... I don't know if you guys noticed this, but there was moments where, say, Beeble, Beeble would land like a 1-2 or, or a 3-punch combination, and Canelo would look outside the ring, and I'm like, what's Canelo looking at here? What's what's he doing? Keep your... You know, he should be keeping his eye on Bevel. He should be keeping his eye on the opponent and protecting himself, but it's as if Canelo was in such disbelief with what was going on in that ring that he was looking for some sort of guidance. He was looking for some sort of coaching during the rounds. And between the rounds, he was looking at his coach, uh, Reynoso, and, and the other people there. And he was looking at them as if to say, what's going on here? I'm supposed to win this. He had that same look on his eye, in his eyes that, that Deontay Wilder had when he fought Fury in the second fight. You remember how just... Wilder just looked like he was in absolute shock and absolute disbelief that he had an opponent who was actually standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and actually throwing power punches. It's like he couldn't believe it. Like, he thought he was Superman. He thought he was unhittable. He thought he was 
all he had to do was land one punch and that he only had to be perfect once. And when when, when he realised that in that particular fight he was going to be he was going to be up against some resistance and he was going to have to actually go out and earn the victory. He couldn't handle it and he completely capitulated. And it's confirmed to me that, you know, and it's the same situation with Canelo. And that, that that's confirmed to me that Canelo isn't very mentally strong. You know, I, I've always thought that about Canelo. You know, he's never had really a lot of, a lot of fighting heart, a lot of fighting spirit. He's not a guy who has really faced any adversity in his career because any time he's lost a fight or any time he's had a, a difficult fight, he's been bailed out, you know. He's had the referees on his side, he's had the judges on his side. I mean, both Triple G fights, he it, th those were similar fights, by the way. They weren't quite as one-sided as this, but he definitely took more punishment in those fights. You know, Triple G's definitely a, a better boxer and a bigger puncher than Beevil. Not quite as big as Beevil, not as young and as athletic, but... He's a bigger puncher, and he and he is a lot more. He's a lot more accurate with his power shots, basically. And he definitely put more of a beating on Canelo, but he of course took more punches in in return than than Bevel did. So I guess Bevel did a slightly better job defensively than Triple G did. But in those fights, I, I think Canelo was you know he was bailed out by the judges in those fights, and that kind of gave him this sense of entitlement because when the Bevel fight ended. Despite the fact this was like a 10 to 2, 11 to 1 victory for Beevil, if you're being generous, what did Canelo do after the fight? He went right over to the corner, got up on the on the on the the corner post and waved to the crowd as if he thought he won the fight. And it was it was as if Canelo thought that the decision was predetermined because as they were reading out the scorecards which, like I said earlier in the video, were an absolute travesty, an absolute utter disgrace. Um, they, they had Canelo Alvarez winning all four of the first four rounds. I mean, work that one out. Okay, I'm, I'm not even going to get into it. Work that one out for me, will you? But yeah, the, the scores were 113-115, I think. 115-113, so a, a two-round margin. And all, all three judges had the exact same score. And... Canelo Alvarez put his hand up, was smiling to the crowd, was waving at the crowd. He thought he was getting the decision. He thought he won the fight. Guys, I'm not even kidding. Canelo, after getting absolutely, utterly embarrassed, dominated, schooled, and exposed, Canelo thought he still won the fight. He thought... <laughs> he thought he was getting the decision. Like that. See, that's what happens when you coddle a fighter. That's what happens when you spoil somebody. You know, when you get this spoiled brat who literally thought that he had the judges in his pockets. He thought that everybody had his back, that they were going to bail him out again. Well, that can only work for so long. All right, There's only so many times the judges and officials can bail you out before you have to fend for yourself. And I think it's finally time... For Canelo's training wheels to come off. And it's finally time for him to start fending for himself. Because clearly the boxing establishment. You know they tried everything they could to get him the win. Like I said. You know Russell Mora was the referee. A history of protecting certain Mexican fighters in America. And you know you had the three American judges of course. Who were, were obviously rooting for Canelo. I mean they were looking for every excuse whatsoever. To give the rounds to Canelo. So. You know, they gave him every, every chance you could possibly have. You know, every A-side privilege. And he still wasn't able to win it. That's like a humiliation ritual. That's what it's like to me. Because, let's be honest, they could have given him the decision if they wanted to. And it's not as if Canelo's fan base wouldn't have accepted it. They would have. They would have accepted that decision. And they would have done the same thing. They would have behaved the same way as they did after both Golovkin fights. So... It's not beyond the realms of possibility that three corrupt American judges could have gone out their way to make sure they gave Canelo enough of the close rounds for him to win the fight. So what that tells me is that the boxing establishment are not as fond of Canelo as they once were. And maybe it's time for him to earn his way, if you know what I mean. It, it was time for him to, to take one for the team and, and if he was going to win... He was going to have to at least do some of the work, if you know what I mean. You know, he was going to have to meet them halfway. But 
it wasn't what happened. He got schooled, he got dominated, and he got exposed as far as I'm concerned. He, he got humiliated, let's be honest. And to all the Canelo fans, you know, the people who um, really don't like my channel, but for some reason they can't seem to stay away from it, you know, those guys... To, to you guys in particular, look, it's not that, it's not personal, it's not that serious, okay, it's just a sport, alright, this is not, I, I still have to go to work tomorrow, okay, whether or not Canelo or Beevil wins and however this fight goes, so it's, in, it's completely inconsequential to me, it's just that when you come to our channels and people like myself, people like Precise, people like Del Boy, like whoever, you know, people who have particular views on Canelo, to, which might not be mainstream, but we, we we have certain views on him, and these views come from our experience as boxing fans, and what we know to be true about the sport, and what we understand about the sport, and when we say that we don't rate Canelo, or we say that Canelo's fights are fixed, or we say that Canelo isn't as great as he as he's being advertised to be, and we, he's not as highly regarded to, to us as he is to the mainstream media or the casual boxing fans. When you guys come along to our channel and start calling us haters and start saying that we have ulterior motives and calling us fanboys of certain rivals of his and, and this, that and the other and, you know, trying to discredit what we say because you're on the winning side, essentially, because Canelo's been winning, because he's been looking great and because... Things seem to be going great for him. You know, like I was saying before, glory supporters, basically. I was saying that before. Just just remember that that's only going to last for so long because when you put all your eggs in one basket like that, when you put all your hearts and you, all your heart and soul into one fighter and you essentially live vicariously through that fighter and your entire identity on here and... Your entire online persona basically revolves around your fanboyism for one fighter. Just remember, you're not in control. That fighter could let you down at any moment, and Canelo really let you down, didn't he? And not only did he let himself down, not only did he make an absolute arse of himself, but he made an absolute arse out of you guys too. And this was an embarrassment. Like, if, if you've been riding with Canelo from... from from the Triple G fight onwards, if you've been putting your head in the sand and pretending that there's there's nothing suspicious about this guy and how his career has gone and what's been going on behind the scenes with him, and you've just been pretending like everything was normal, you look like a, a bit of a dummy right now, don't you? Like, you've kind of, like I said, you've made a complete and utter arse of yourself, whereas someone like myself, who has kept it consistent with Canelo, okay, I've, I've given credit where it, where it's due, I've been critical when I've needed to be critical, I've given constructive criticism, and I've always kept it real, I've always kept it consistent, I haven't allowed one fight or one performance to sway my opinion one way or the other, I've taken his entire career and his entire resume for what it is, and I've broken it down, and I've given my perspective and my opinion on what is going on with Canelo, based on what I know, and what I believe, and what I understand about the sport of boxing, as a guy who's been studying the sport for many years, when you come around to my channel and call me a hater, and call me a fanboy, you make you really make an arse of yourself, and me on the other hand, I actually feel vindicated by this, because what I saw from Canelo in that ring last night, is what I've always seen from Canelo, except... From a psychological point of view, something was different, you know. The things that he was doing before weren't working in that ring, were they? Um, a lot of people, like a lot of these um, channels on here that like to make these fluff pieces, who like to do these technical masterclass breakdowns of how Canelo is able to figure out his opponents and how he sets them up for the knockout and how they're scared of the counter punches and the, they can't deal with the head movement. Those people really made an arse of themselves, didn't they? In, instead of just being consistent and instead of worrying about... I mean, look, in, instead of instead of worrying about having subscribers and, and getting the, the winning side on your team to, to view your channel, why don't you just be honest, right? Instead of being inconsistent and, 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 and just going with the mainstream narrative, just be honest and say what you see. Those fights were fake. Okay, Sergey Kovalev 
took a dive against Canelo. Okay, he did. Triple G beat Canelo twice, okay? He landed more punches. He landed the harder punches. He schooled him. He won clearly. Just be honest, okay? Just be honest with what you see from Canelo, okay? Stop trying to cook for a certain fan base. Stop trying to push a certain narrative because it makes you look good. It makes you look non-biased and it makes you look more like a genius because for the moment in time, you're on the winning side. Just be honest, okay? So, yeah, I feel somewhat vindicated by this. Um, and I think I, I think I pretty much summed it up. You know, this video has gone on way too long. I didn't intend for this video to be half an hour long, but whatever. You know, I'm sure you guys will probably enjoy it. But yeah, um, Canelo Alvarez, complete and utter fraud, got completely exposed. Uh, Dimitri Bevel, I've never I've never been a massive massive like believer in Dimitri Bevel. I think he's a good fighter. I've always rated him. I think he's got great boxing fundamentals. Good good boxing IQ, you know, good technique, and he's a decent athlete, he's got good stamina, you know, a, a nice patient, consistent fighter over 12 rounds, but let's be honest, he's not the best guy at light heavyweight, is he? You know, he's not the, or, or at least he hasn't proven himself to be the best guy at light heavyweight. I always thought Kovalev was better than him, and um, I still think that now, even though Canelo was officially able to beat Kovalev, and, was a, and wasn't able to beat Bevel, he lost to Bevel, Th that doesn't change my opinion on that. Like I said, I'm not a, a reactionary boxing fan, okay? I keep it consistent. I always have and I always will. So that's how I see it. Let me know what you guys think. Um, another fraud in boxing exposed. On to the next day. Eh? <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. Um, thanks for watching and yeah, God bless.